Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. I've got three exciting launches to share with you today. All right, so you might already know about AWS RoboMaker, which I first wrote about in late 2018. This service helps you to develop, simulate, test, and deploy intelligent robotics applications. Behind the scenes, RoboMaker uses the Gazebo environment and lets your robot wander through scenes in order for you to test and perfect your code. You do this to make sure that your robot is clever enough to recognize and then avoid obstacles and to successfully complete whatever task it's programmed to do. So what's new? We launched AWS RoboMaker WorldForge to help you build even better robots. Instead of investing a lot of time and energy building 3D scenes by hand and one at a time, you can now let WorldForge do it for you. You can start a world from scratch or you can use a template. Either way, you can customize your world as desired. You can create multiple rooms of various types within the floor plans and you can control how closely they are connected. You choose the number of floor plans and the number of interiorations variations per floor plan, and then you click the Generate button. This starts a job that will generate the desired number of worlds, each one similar to the template, but with variations in the wall and floor materials and in the placement of the furniture. Now, these are not simply cosmetic changes, but genuine variety that will provide some challenges to your robot and help you to write some code that's more flexible and more forgiving. WorldForge is available today in seven AWS regions, to learn more, you can read Alejandro's detailed blog post. Okay, so for the next launch, let me start with just a bit of background. When applications make HTTP requests to a server, the requests generally pass through one or more proxies. All these proxies handle compliant requests in a standard way, but each one can parse and interpret non-compliant requests in slightly different ways. This is called HTTP desync, and it can be sometimes used to trick your web application into doing something it should not. So what's new? To help you guard against this, you can now set the HTTP desync mode for new and existing application and classic load balancers. You get three options. In the monitor mode, it simply forwards all the requests that it receives. The defensive mode is the default. It emits safe requests and it blocks non-compliant ones, and it also closes any kept alive connections when it sees an ambiguous request. Your existing ALBs and CLBs are now in defensive mode. The strictest mode ensures that your client only sees requests that are fully RFC 7230 compliant. There are some new CloudWatch metrics that give you some insight into the aggregate threat level, along with access logs for application load balancers. One super cool thing, the decision-making logic is also available in the new HTTP Desync Guardian open source library, so you can embed it in your own HTTP engine. It's actually kind of cool to browse this code and see the kinds of things it looks for. This new feature is available at no charge in all AWS regions. And finally, something a bit different to wrap things up today. My colleagues Jonathan and Thomas recently published this book, and I like it a lot. Reaching Cloud Velocity is the title, and this book helps you to do it. As you embark on your cloud journey, you're going to create a cloud leadership team, a cloud center of excellence, and a cloud business office. You need to think about people and processes, architecture and migrations, security, governance, and so forth. The great news, after reading all seven detailed and helpful chapters, you're going to be ready to take on and master all these challenges, and you'll be ready to succeed in the cloud. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. We always look forward to your feedback. Send us an email, leave us a tweet, send us a comment. To see some more videos just like this, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching once again, and we'll see you again soon.